B knowingly, B inherently peaceful, unconditionally fulfilled, and loving the presence of awareness. with which all experience is known. In which all experience arises. And out of which all experience is made. Of which all experience is the activity. presence of awareness that we are is inherently peaceful because like the space in a room it is not disturbed by anything that takes place within it This presence of awareness that we essentially are is unconditionally fulfilled or whole or complete because like the space in a room, it does not want anything to be other than the way it is never resists what is present and never seeks what is not present. And thus its nature, our nature, is happiness. And this presence of awareness that we essentially are is loving in the sense that it is indiscriminately one with all experience. There is no distance between itself and any experience. It knows no separation or otherness. Simply be knowingly, this inherently peaceful, unconditionally fulfilled and loving presence of awareness. cannot, nor need we, become this presence of awareness through any effort or cessation of any effort of the mind. No practice or effort or discipline is necessary to be what we always and already are. All that is required is to simply notice what we essentially are and to be that knowingly.
everyone is, already and always only that. Not everybody recognizes that. Why? Because most people have allowed their self, the presence of awareness, to become entangled in the content of the experience. And thus they do not know their self clearly. So the first step here is to simply notice what we essentially are. That which is essential to us is that which cannot be removed from us. No thought, feeling, sensation, perception, activity or relationship is essential to us. All of these are being added to us and then removed from us. What remains when all of these have been removed is ourself. The simple fact of being aware or awareness itself. Simply recognize that you are that and be that knowingly. This inherently peaceful, unconditionally fulfilled and loving presence of awareness is that with which all experience is known. It is that in which all experience arises and exists and into which it vanishes when it disappears. And it is that out of which all experience is made. As that to which all experience appears or that with which all experience is known. The presence of awareness is the knower of experience, the witness of experience. At this stage, in this first step, we make a distinction between our self, awareness, and the objects or the content of experience. When I speak of the objects or the content of experience, I refer to thoughts, images, feelings, sensations, perceptions, activities and relationships. We awareness are that which knows or is aware of the entire content of experience. As such, we awareness are uninvolved in the content of experience. If you want an, an image to help you visualize this first recognition of the nature of awareness, you could take the image of a mother watching her four children playing in the garden. She's watching them out of the kitchen window. The mother knows or perceives her children. Each of the children are different. Each 
of the children. Each child is different. But the mother is the same mother in each case, the same knowing or perceiving presence in each case. She is independent of the particular qualities or activities or behaviors of each child. She observes or witnesses each child impartially without involvement. This is the, the first recognition, the recognition of ourself as the knower or the witness of the experience, impartially noticing, witnessing, being aware of whatever it is that is being experienced, independent of it, free from it. Not implicated by it. Don't follow my words rationally or intellectually. Follow them in your experience. Check truth of what is being suggested in your experience. Having separated ourselves in this way from the content of experience in order to establish the presence of awareness, our essential self, we then begin to explore the nature this awareness more intimately. We have already seen that awareness is the, the knower, the noticer, the witness of experience and is as such inherently free from or independent of experience. If we look more closely at the relationship between our self-awareness and the content of our experience, thoughts, images, feelings, etc., we find that it is not quite accurate to say that we observe experience, like a mother watching her children from a distance playing in the garden. We are not an a distant observer of experience, although this is a, a legitimate and partial understanding. We, awareness, are the very medium or space within which all experience arises, within which all experience exists and into which all experience and into which all experience vanishes when it disappears. You would like an image to accompany this second step or stage of understanding. Take the image of empty space, 
only the empty space is a knowing space. Add the quality of knowing to this space. So this space of awareness is not like the inert space in your room. It is the, like a knowing space. It both knows or is aware of and contains experience. Again, see that we are not making an effort to become a special kind of awareness or to change awareness or to enlighten awareness ourself in any way. We are simply observing our experience. When I say we are, experience, are observing our experience, do not mean to imply that we are one thing and awareness is something else that we are knowing or observing. We are awareness. Awareness is the knowing element in all experience. It is we, awareness, who are, who is, who are observing ourself. Awareness is the only one who is aware. Therefore, only awareness. Therefore, only awareness can know or be aware of anything, including itself. So, when I say notice that you are this inherently peaceful, unconditionally fulfilled and loving presence of awareness. speaking to you, awareness, you, awareness, notice your own nature. Notice that you are the knowing element in all experience. You are the space-like quality, space-like presence within which all experience arises. Notice that just as the space the room in which you are, relatively speaking, sitting is empty of objects. Rather, it is, it's, it is essentially empty of objects. And it is on account of the emptiness of the space that there is room for objects, physical objects within it. So likewise, notice that it is on account of the emptiness the objectlessness or the formlessness of yourself, that there is room for experience within you. If you, awareness, were not empty or formless or objectless, there would be no room for experience within you. It is on account of your emptiness the fullness of experience is possible. Notice that just as the space in your room is never disturbed by whatever takes place in your room, so you, awareness, are never disturbed by whatever takes place in experience. Experience, whatever its content, however wonderful or awful or neutral it may be, exists within you, flows through you, vanishes back into you. But no experience leaves a trace or a stain on your being. Your being presence of awareness is always in the same 
self-esteem, inherently peaceful, unconditionally fulfilled and loving condition. That is our natural condition, not a state that we may obtain in the future if we practice hard enough or meditate long enough. It is our nature now. It has always been and will always be our nature. It is simply there for the recognizing. Don't postpone this recognition. Why wait till tomorrow or next week or next year? And it can be recognized simply, easily, now. Just as the space of your room needs nothing from the objects or the activities that take place within it. So you, we, awareness, need nothing from the content of experience. This is what it means to be unconditionally fulfilled. Our sense of fulfillment, wholeness, completeness or happiness does not depend on conditions, conditions of the mind, conditions of the body, or conditions of the world. Its fullness, our fullness, our happiness is prior to and independent of conditions, situations, circumstances, activities, relationships, etc. There were one thing to remember, experience from this week we spend together. Indeed, if there were one thing to remember from our entire spiritual practice and study of the spiritual literature over the years and decades, it would be this. Peace and happiness is our nature. It is prior to and independent of experience. And is it, it is always accessible at all times, in all circumstances, and for all people. If we have understood this, have understood the essence of all the great religious and spiritual teachings. The only reason that the religious and spiritual teachings have become so complex and varied was because of the need to explain this single truth to, to different people with different levels of understanding. The complexity of the religious and spiritual teachings has nothing to do with the complexity of truth. Truth could not be more simple. The complexity and the diversity of the religious and spiritual traditions is a response to the complexity and diversity of the human mind. It is only in response to the human mind of the spiritual and religious traditions elaborated all the different pathways and teachings. 
all the different pathways and teachings eventually, sooner or later, more or less, in a more or less direct way, lead to the same experiential recognition. Namely, that peace is our nature. We are happiness itself. Happiness is not something we can become, or even that we can know as an objective experience. We cannot know happiness, we can only be it. Otherwise, we cannot be unhappy, we can only know it. in this second step stage we begin to collapse the distinction between ourself the presence of awareness the knower of experience and the objects of experience thoughts images feelings etc we not simply know the objects of experience distance. They all appear within us. And just as the space in which a physical, the physical space in which an object appears, touches that object intimately. So we, the presence of awareness, touch all experience intimately there is no distance between ourself and the content of our experience so in the, the culmination of the first step the recognition of our self awareness as that with which all experience is known. The culmination of this step is the recognition of ourself as the presence of awareness. This is not yet the step that is referred to in the traditions as awakening or enlightenment or salvation in the Christian tradition. referred to as enlightenment, awakening, liberation. The salvation is the recognition, not just the recognition that I am the presence of awareness, but the recognition of the nature of the awareness that I am. That is, that the awareness that I am is inherently peaceful conditionally fulfilled and loving. We recognize the innate peace and happiness of our true nature does not require experience to be anything other than it is from moment to moment. It does not require the mind, the body or the world to be in a peaceful or pleasant condition or state. Even when outer circumstances are difficult or challenging or distressing as they are for many people at this time. So even when there is distress or turmoil or loneliness 
inside as there is for many people at this time. Even then, our true nature of happiness and peace shines both in the background of experience and in its midst. But Camus referred to when he said there is, he said, in the depths of winter, I finally realized that there is in me an invincible summer. Even in the depths of distress, despair, or loneliness, Light of our being shines. And in the third step or stage of understanding, we completely collapse the distinction between our self awareness and the content of experience. We are not just that with which all experience is known. We are not just that within which all experience arises, exists, and into which it vanishes. We, awareness, are the very stuff out of which all experience is made. We want an image to accompany this stage of understanding. Take the analogy of what takes place in a dream at night. When we have a dream at night, we imagine a dreamed world within our own mind. But in order to view that world, our own mind forgets that it is dreaming and enters into its own imagination, its own dream, and seems to become a separate subject of experience, a localized perspective within its own dream, from whose point of view its own activity appears as an outside world. Consider the possibility that we, awareness, unlimited, ever-present awareness, has, so to speak, dreamed, or rather is dreaming, is imagining the universe within itself, is assuming the form of the universe, just as our mind assumes the form of the dreamed world. But in order to view that universe, must simultaneously forget that it is dreaming. Awareness must overlook or forget itself. It must localize itself within its own dream as a localized perspective, that is, each of us, from whose perspective its own imagination appears as an outside world. In other words, consider the possibility that everything, everything is the activity of consciousness or awareness. And that we as apparently separate people or selves are localized perspectives within the activity of awareness through whose agency awareness appears to itself the outside world. In 
other words, be open to the possibility. That the religious language of the Sufis, everything, everything we experience is the presence of God, is God's activity. It is at this stage of understanding that we can, the third quality of awareness that I mentioned, if we can attribute qualities to awareness. I suggested at the beginning that awareness had three qualities, that it is innate, inherently peaceful, unconditionally fulfilled, and that it is loving. This third quality of love. Love is the absence of otherness, absence of separation. When everything is known and felt to be the activity of a single, infinite and indivisible whole made of pure consciousness or awareness, it is recognized that there is nothing other than this awareness. is the experience of love or beauty. So to, to summarize, we could say that awareness has these three qualities. It is inherently peaceful. It needs nothing from experience, thus its nature is happiness that it is intimately one with all experience and thus knows no otherness. And thus its nature is love. These three qualities, if we can call them qualities, peace, happiness, and love, are our nature. And the three steps we take to recognize this First, the recognition I am the presence of awareness with which all experience is known. Second step, I am the presence of awareness within which all experience arises. And the third step, I am that out of which all experience is made. And that of which everything is the activity 